You are watching The Jenny Lynn Show, and I'm Jenny Lynn Gleave, your host. Tonight, I have another fascinating guest for you. This time, as you can see, she's a beautiful woman, and her name is Alicia White. Alicia, thank you for being here. It's an honor to be with you, Jenny Lynn. Thank you. Alicia, you are an engineer, and now you are doing some fascinating engineering stuff. I can't wait to hear about it. I see you've brought some with you. So let's start where you want to begin. Wow. Okay. I would like to start, I guess, with my podcast because it is the thing I'm most excited about. Okay. Every week we talk to engineers and scientists, technology people about what they're excited about. It's educators and enthusiasts and makers and hackers and tinkers and all these people who just want to share their love of building. It's called Embedded. Uh, Embedded FM is where you can find it on iTunes and everything. And it lets me talk to people about their passions, just like you do. That's great. So you also write some stuff, don't you? I do. Having been an engineer, and a very specific sort of engineer, an embedded engineer, uh, I, I found that people didn't really know what that meant, and they didn't yeah. know how to do it well. I don't know what that is. Can you tell me what an embedded engineer is? Sure. Embedded software is software that runs on something that isn't a computer. So you think about your microwave or, or your car. Right. Or even sometimes your smartwatch. And these all are things that require software, but they aren't as smart as a, as a phone. They definitely aren't as smart as a laptop or a right. PC. And so I work in this space where I get to work on devices. And I've gotten to work on DNA scanners and race cars and airplanes and children's toys. And it's just so much fun to see the application of my work. Yes. As well as the puzzles and, and the math and the computer parts that drew me to engineering to start with. And so as, as you mentioned, I wrote a book. It's called Making Embedded Systems. And I wrote it because in college, engineers usually learn computer science or they learn electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. But embedded software, an embedded engineer has to do some of both. And so I wanted to bridge the gap so that our information didn't fall through the cracks and so we could actually have people who knew both. They weren't afraid of getting dirty with the hardware and they weren't afraid of making really good software that made our devices more dependable and made our Fitbits last for longer. All these tweaks that engineers can do to make their devices better. And that's what I like to do. So can someone like me pick that book up who's not a technical person, read it and understand what's in it? No, I okay. wish. I started <laughs> another book that was for that, but okay. I didn't finish it. This is more for software engineers and hardware engineers who okay. want to get into the more specific field. Got it. Um, it does have some fun parts. You know, there's a, a dinosaur and some jokes, and it talks about interviewing. But no, I don't think it would be interesting <laughs> to you. The podcast, maybe, but not so much the book. So you also, apart from having your podcast and the embedded stuff, why, how is this all related to those toys on the table next to you? All right. So I mentioned uh, getting to work at a number of different interesting things. I worked in a gunshot location system just down the street from here, actually, where we would put sensors around a city and automatically call the police when a gun was fired. And that was incredibly amazing to me, both the technology and the fact that there were a lot of stories about how we saved lives. Wait a second, let's back up. I know, I mean, there's, there's a connection, I promise there's a connection. Yeah, tell me again, so you put something in the guns? No, no, you put the sensors around a city. Oh, okay. Uh, and so it's in Oakland and San Francisco and Richmond, there's uh, dozens and dozens. I don't work there any longer, Right. but it, it is all across the country. And I didn't know something like this existed. So every time someone fires a gun, the police is alerted? The police are alerted. And they can listen to the environment to uh, figure out maybe how many shooters and, and all of this information that you don't want to think about. We don't want to think about guns. But I also don't want people to die. So right. that was pretty cool. It was 
really neat to work on a product that was that far-reaching. Wow. And yet, this guy is just as far-reaching. And it's the same sort of thing. It's still embedded software. It's software for things that aren't computers. And so this, uh, this is my own learning leap. And he came out many, many years ago. I don't even know. And they sell him at Toys R Us? I don't know if they still do. But I made him. Well, I wrote all the software wow. for him. That's amazing. And he comes. Uh, he, he came with cartridges, and you could put in your own uh, greetings. So if you wanted to give him to a niece or a nephew, then you could say, hello from Jenny Lynn. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, um, the software is really similar between how you go from a gunshot location system to this, or even to an airplane. Um, because you have to figure out how to make it in such a tiny device that it's important to understand what you're doing. And that's, that's what I do. I can't believe it. So I've seen these toys around. You know, you never think about embedded software in it. No. You see it and it looks like a green and yellow and red cushy toy with the alphabet on it. Yeah. You never, so this particular toy, what does it do? Um, well, one is of the first things it does is it teaches kids the alphabet. They okay. can push the buttons. Oh, you can? Can you push it? I didn't put batteries in. I'm sorry. Shame on I you. I didn't want him to make noise for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but so if you had batteries in it, we could hear it saying A, B, C, D. And it would play games, and it would say, find the letter that starts with dad, or find the letter that is in the word dad, or papa, or... I'm sorry I'm asking you this because my kids are grown up, so I don't know these things, and so I'm sure a mother would think I'm asking you a stupid question because they know what it does. But oh. because I can just see it, I don't know what its capabilities are. I'm so sorry. So this is why I'm asking you for people like myself who don't know that it isn't just a pretty looking stuffed animal. Oh, it no. has amazing capabilities because of your embedded software. Exactly. So tell me more. Well, and this one, this one's pretty funny. He came with cartridges, and you could have him talk about different things. One of the first cartridges that came out was potty training. And when you think about writing wow. software to teach kids how to do potty training, it was, it was strange. I, I was a lot more comfortable with teaching kids how their alphabet than than pee and poo. <laughs> well, that's great, because so many kids are afraid to get out of diapers. It's a habit, yeah. right? So if you could make fun, a fun way of getting them out of it, I think it's incredible. Well, there are all these devices that are, are changing our lives by pushing us to do one thing or another. Um, I mean, this, this pushes you to, read, to learn to read or, or to do potty training. And maybe it helps you be a little bit more friendly with your grandparents because they can talk to you through it. But Fitbits, uh, the pedometers that you wear. You worked on a Fitbit? I did work on a Fitbit. I have a Fitbit. Tell me, what did you do on the Fitbit? Do you use the alarm code? Yes. And so it'll wake you up really quietly? Yes. That's me. <laughs> That's me waking I you up. I <laughs> feel so honored to be sitting here with you. I know many people who have Fitbits. Now I can go tell them I know the person who wrote the software in that little device. It wasn't just me. It's a pretty big team now, and they have you know many products. It's pretty but neat to still, see. But still, you play but the part. But when I was there, it was very small. And I love working with these tiny companies, helping them go a little further and get products into the marketplace. And I have to tell you, seeing your products on Target's shelves just when I worked at LeapFrog, it was so hard not to go at Christmas time and play with all of them and then exclaim how awesome they were so that anybody walking by would know. Well, they'd be like, oh, that lady thinks it's great. It's great. I'm going to go buy it. <laughs> they don't know that lady played a part in... No. So what is the other little um, animal that you toy that you have there? Well, this is Maxwell. And I have to admit, the outside is just a dog toy, something I picked up just randomly at a store. Right. But the inside, I don't know if you can see him glow. I, yes, he's, I he's saw a little a red right there. now. Yes, I do. Um, when I had a friend was very ill, and I didn't realize how ill, but she passed away and I didn't know right away. And I felt awful. 
And you think about these things like life alert and these uh, help I've fallen and I can't get up sorts of things. But if you can't afford that or you just it doesn't work for you, there are ways you can build it yourself. And that's been something I like to talk to people about, is that you don't have to depend on everyone else to do this. And this isn't the formal engineering. This isn't the book engineering. This is you can go out and make something that when you, you pat it every day, and if I, don't, if I give it to you, and you have to pat it every day, and I, I say, Jenny Lynn, if you don't pat it, it's going to send me email, and I'm going to call you, and I'm going to check. I'm going to make sure you're okay. And so I, I wrote a tutorial on how almost anyone could do it. So it didn't take a lot of software. It doesn't take a lot of technical know-how. It's, it's buying a few things and putting it together and, and changing the batteries every six months when you go home to see your parents. So this one is for adults, not for kids. Well, I've had a few people give them to their kids as they go off to college and say, I know you're not going to call me every week. I, I do understand. But if you, pat, if you pat him every day, I'll know you'll be okay. Where have you been with all this stuff? I've never even seen this. It's a great idea, especially for the older people, you, like you say, who cannot afford any other alarm system that you know may involve having to pay a company. This, so when you sent this to your friend and you didn't see the light, how did you know if she was patting it or not, or if she was okay? Okay, so getting a little bit into the technology. Inside, it has a microprocessor and it has a way to talk to the internet. And it also has an accelerometer, but that's just sort of like a button. And if you pat it, it lights up, yeah. and it tries to talk to the internet. And every day on the internet, there's something out there, a server widget that says, have I heard from Jenny Lynn today? And if someday it says, oh, you know, I haven't heard from him for her for 24 hours, I'm going to mail her friend. And it's all, the internet will check, and if he says he's got, if Maxwell, which is the name of that one, says Hi, Max. his uh, <laughs> batteries are low, it will email me and say, come over, because I did intend it for a more elderly crowd who could, who maybe didn't want to have to deal with the batteries and stuff. So it e would email me. And it's all pieces that exist. They're all parts that exist. And you need a little bit of help maybe putting the parts together. But this isn't rocket science. This isn't hard engineering. People can do this. This is the scramble eggs. This is hard for someone like me. I am sitting here with pure genius. And you're telling me this is not real hard. I no. admire your work. It's, it's 20 bucks worth of hardware and maybe two hours of your time. Okay, maybe three if you <laughs> really, really, really want to tell me you, you can't do it, but people can. The engineering technology that's getting so awesome, that's making our lives so connected and interesting and our cars that can drive themselves, you don't have to feel left behind. There are ways to get into that. There's a, a little board, it's called an, an Arduino. And it's a special little microprocessor, and it, it was made not for people like me. It was made for artists, so that they could put lights in their projects. And the idea is that it is so simple, anyone can use it. And that's the goal. You need a computer, and you need the board, and maybe a light or two. But people are not just building consumer products or medical products or really neat gunshot location systems. People are building the tools so that everyone can build what they want. But do you understand how intimidating this is for someone who just does not even get the concept or the idea to do something like this? To you, I whenever do. we're good at something, we think it's like, oh, it's so easy. I've said to people, things that I've done are so easy, and then afterwards thought about it and thought, well, for them it may not be. I think you were sitting there telling me how e anybody could do this, and I'm thinking some people would be intimidated by the whole concept of wiring stuff up and putting batteries in it. It is intimidating, and I understand the feeling. Someone gave something to me today that they said, oh, this is easy, it'll take you half an hour, and I spent hours on it, and I still don't understand. I do understand that, that overwhelming, oh, I can't do this, it's so hard. But what I wanted to tell you is that there are people like me, although people who are a lot more dedicated to it, 
trying to make it so that anyone can participate, mm -hmm. so that there are tutorials that say, no, no, it's okay. You're not gonna, you're not gonna light anything on fire. You're not gonna hurt yourself. You're not gonna get shocked. And here's how to be careful. And here's what you need to be careful about. And here's where you can play and try stuff. And it needs, we do need more people who are technologically literate, but sometimes you just wanna tinker. You just wanna try it. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. And that's, that's what I want to share with you is this, it's okay to fail. It's okay to try it. And it's okay to be intimidated not to let you, that stop you. Right. So since you're doing the podcast and you're clearly a very talented engineer, I hope you're not neglecting your abilities to create stuff because you're so focused on your podcast. What are you working on now and can you talk about it? Oh, I, I can't talk about what I'm being paid to work on. Okay. I can tell you what my latest hobby thing is, although I haven't gotten very far and it's very silly. Okay. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I am working on a camera system using machine learning, which is something that's really new to me. And what I wanted to do, I want to build robotic hands, mm -hmm. and I want it to type on a keyboard. And I kind of want to be able to, to myself, I'll be typing over here, and over there it, I'll say hello, and over there on the big robotic hands it will say hello, and it will... <laughs> It will punch out the letters. It's very silly, but I wanted to learn the machine learning part of it. Okay. The, the how does how do I control the hands? How do I control the fingers, motors, and how do I identify the keys and where they are? And what, you know, the letter A key on this keyboard looks different than that. And so this is a, a project so that I can learn. But I I have to admit I'm a little intimidated by some of the machine learning and I've never done the motors on my own I've always had another engineer who knew how to do that uh, Do you have children? I do not know. Okay. Well when you have them if and when you do they're gonna be happy kids <laughs> They'll be rocking out all the new cutting-edge toys While the other kids in the neighborhood are gonna be going. I wish your mom was my mom <laughs> So what do you because you clearly are so talented? What do you enjoy working on the most? Toys, little gadgets, or the big systems that tell the police when a gun is being shot? What do you have more fun working on? I wouldn't be working on the robot keyboard if I didn't think it would lead me to something more interesting. It's a toy, and it's an easy way for me to talk about all the things I want to learn right. without trying to target an application yet. It breaks the problem into small pieces. Right. I would much rather work on important things. Now, I don't discount toys because teaching kids to read is amazing. And using the potty. <laughs> That's using the tough. Potty. That's challenging. I know. I raised two kids. <laughs> but working at LeapFrog, I would uh, visit, I would take some of my toys to a kindergarten and spend a few hours a week teaching kids to learn to write because that was when my next toy was going to be to learn to write. But the kids would then play with the toys I'd already put out. And I saw a young, a young man who went from not knowing his alphabet, which now, if you're in kindergarten, you have to know your alphabet before you get there. Right. You're behind. He didn't know his alphabet. He was behind. And he took one of my toys home, and the next week, he knew it. And, I was, and it wasn't even a toy I liked, and yet it, it, made, a it made a difference. Mm -hmm. So I don't discount the toys, but I really like working on medical devices. It's one of the reasons I can't talk about what I'm working on. Awesome. Because I... You know, there are so many things changing right now that you can wear heart monitors and you can get things that will check how your blood pressure and pulse and glucose are doing. And these things will keep people alive. I am happy to hear you say this because I've interviewed quite a few technology people and they're talking about cars driving themselves and, you know, a lot of cutting edge stuff. But I feel like we need more people doing stuff in the medical field because more people die from illnesses than car accidents and such. So it's exciting to hear that you're working on some medical technology. And I know you can't tell me, but based on what I've seen here, I'm sure it will make a difference. Um, why did you choose medical devices? Is it the company you're working with or you just decided enough toys, enough gun control stuff, now I'm going into medical. Is that how it 
worked out? Medica was one of the first things I started with. Okay. Um, I worked on a DNA scanner not too long out of college, um, around 1998, when it was really cutting edge. And that was out of HP Labs. And that court kind of set me up with understanding certification processes and how to write software for things that can kill you. Because that's a big, scary difference. The DNA? Well, software for things that can kill you. Right. This, he's not going to hurt anybody. Even if he lies to you and tells you that the letter P makes the S sound, it's not going to hurt, hurt anybody. But if you get a bad DNA reading, one that tells you uh, something that isn't true, you could get a completely improper medical diagnosis. Um, but I've also worked on things that will monitor your temperature in ICU and during an operation, which is really important if you're under, under anesthetics. Right. If your temperature drops, that could be, go very badly. And I worked, having done those things, I had the opportunity to work on airplanes. Um, and it was just a little sensor on an airplane, but... What was its function? So when you are flying, mm -hmm. there's the artificial horizon, the blue and, and the, the brown. Yeah. And those have been switching from essentially bubble systems, to mechanical systems, to uh, microelectrical mechanical systems. They're very tiny, tiny things that are much cheaper and more reliable. Okay. And so I worked on that sensor, and then it would hook up to the airplane's display. And uh, those are inertial measurement units. Although I have to admit that once I sat down on an airplane and told somebody that, they didn't talk to me at all. They didn't want to know anything else about inertial measurement units. That was just the most boring thing. But they are very neat because they're sensors that allow so many other things to happen. Uh, and so I worked on that for FAA certification, and that was a part of FDA certification, which is all just trying to make software safe for things that can kill you. And airplanes are different because they, if they don't just hurt the people on the plane, they can hurt the people below. I mean, we learned that lesson. All right. And it's a big change. So having gone back and forth between FDA and FAA, now I am in the position of understanding how that process works. And I care so much about making these, these fun and interesting technologies available to a whole area that can use them. When you think about inertial measurement units on your body, that's what a Fitbit is. Mm -hmm. It's just counting your steps. Right. Um, so there's lots more that can go along with that. So, you know, whenever I'm doing these interviews where I'm becoming smarter, <laughs> the time flies. We are down to five minutes. And I just want to make sure that we cover everything you want to share with us. Whatever we... Uh, I, what haven't I asked you that you want to make sure we get in this interview? Do you want to? Well, I mean, talk some more I really can podcast? gush about anything I work on. Oh, yes, you, really you know who you remind me of? I've interviewed Mr. Steve Wozniak, and you remind me very much of that interview. You can tell how much he loves yes. what he did and does. He, there was so much enthusiasm coming from him but I just wanted to sit there and just keep listening. And before I knew it, the time was gone, and I hadn't asked him half of my questions. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask you, in all of this engineering stuff that you've done, what do you want to make sure you cover in your lifetime? I want with your skills, for, with my engineering skills. Yes, I want to build things that makes people's lives better. Not, it's weird to say this, not just saving lives, right? but make them better. It's hard to quantify happiness or to even quantify health because if I'm not feeling good today or tomorrow, how do I say which is really worse? But I want people to say, yes, this, this made me happy. This made my life better. And when I look at projects, when I want to choose something next to do, that's what I look for. I look for that, oh, yeah, that. And that was how I got into the gunshot location system. I was just like, really, you can do that? OK, sign me up. <laughs> I love it. But you mentioned my podcast. And yes, I guess I do want to say something else about that, because 
what we're talking about, this excitement, enthusiasm, that's what I look for in my guests. Oh. I had a, a professor from uh, Canada, uh, Patrick Polarski, who is making it with his graduate students, machine intelligence applied to robotics and prosthetics. He's making artificially intelligent prosthetic limbs. And so it knows, because it's smart, that you're in your kitchen, which probably means that it should be in a gripping configuration and it, wow. can, pull, it can grip your knife. It knows when you're driving and so it will go into that configuration. You don't have to fiddle with it a lot, it'll just be smart. Amazing. I know, there's so, so many amazing people out there. I am telling you that, you know, I never think a, a half an hour is enough for people like you, because there's just so much information to cover and share. Um, before we wrap up, because we're getting there, can you leave the address for your podcast very quickly so people sure. know where to find it? It is embedded. Embedded FM is probably the right way to go. There's now an NPR embedded, but we were first. You can find it in iTunes. You can find it on HTTP colon slash slash embedded FM. Thank you so much. It was so fun. I Thank really you. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for watching The Jenny Lynn Show. And remember, you don't have to be a man to be an engineer. You, this woman is making some incredible stuff. So be encouraged. And if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you for watching Excellent. The Jenny Lynn Show. Thank you. Thank you.